Hey guys, what is going on? We're just going to sit down and do something a little bit different here today. We're just going to talk about some Call of Duty, which is one of my absolute favorite things in the world. I've been playing a little bit more Cold War recently, as they did bring out one of the new guns, and I expect them to bring out the WMD map fairly soon. I'm sure it's not too far away. But we've been thinking about some of the lessons that they should have learned with Vanguard that they could have taken from Cold War. There are some very, very good additions and things about Cold War that I definitely do appreciate. There are, of course, some things that I don't like and I'm not actually interested in, I don't like about Cold War, but we could make a separate video on that. But I have five lessons here today that Vanguard definitely should have taken from Cold War to just make the gameplay experience feel a little bit better than it currently does. Just before we do get into it here, make sure you do hit that subscribe button with those notifications turned on. I do very much appreciate it. It really does help me out. Of course, I know about 85% of you guys watching these right now are not subscribed, so if you could take the time to help me grow my little community here, that would be absolutely fantastic. So, let's talk about here, we do have five lessons that Vanguard should have learned from Cold War to make the game a little bit better. Now, these are, of course, all personal preference, and I'm sure you disagree with some of these on this list, and I'm sure you agree with some of them. If you do think of something that I may have missed here, make sure you do let me know in the comments. But, my first thing that I do have a problem with in Vanguard is being able to not mantle everything. In Cold War, there's maps in Cold War that were clearly designed around mantling and everything, being able to jump over walls and everything in mind. There's even items and sort of things that are part of maps that make it very, very clear that you're able to be climbing in this spot. You should clearly do that because it's going to be advantageous to you sometimes. They did everything but add a massive neon sign that tells you that you can jump up here and you can climb in this spot. And it is frustrating swapping between these two games because you can basically climb up every single ledge, every single wall, everything in Cold War. But in Vanguard, you can't climb from a barrel to a ledge. You definitely should be able to climb up. It's just another tool that they could use in their map making design toolkit just to make the map feel a little bit better, feel a little bit more flow, meaning you can move around from different areas and so on. Because in Cold War, you could essentially just climb up everything, like you could jump on a barrel and then jump up onto the next wall up to the level. I'm thinking of like your man tail. You could do this a lot on that map. There was a lot of different spots where you could just stand on like a barrel or a crate or something like that and just jump up to the next little level bit just to give you a bit more flow to the map because you'd be stuck down low if you weren't able to do that. And on Vanguard, I think there is a little bit of that missing, just a ability to sort of mantle and climb up pretty much every surface, like every surface within reason, of course. Like you look at most stuff in Cold War and you'd be like, that's probably a bit high for me to jump up. And then you try and you get up there very easily and you do the same thing in Vanguard and it just doesn't work the same. So the first thing is mantling everything in Cold War is super, super satisfying, and they definitely should look at adding more mantling surfaces in Vanguard just to make the maps have a little bit more flow. The next thing I wanted to talk about is map content. Of course, in Vanguard, we did get 16 maps at launch, which is absolutely fantastic. That is one of the most launched maps, like the most content-filled launches we've ever had for a Call of Duty. But more content at update time means more engagement for longer and more hype surrounding the upcoming seasons. So like your season two update, if that has two or three or four maps, people are looking at that and going, yeah, that's going to be so sick. We've got a little bit more content. Previous games, of course, including Modern Warfare and Cold War, did have sometimes two maps, sometimes three maps, and sometimes occasionally they did add a fourth map sort of randomly here and there during their seasonal updates. Sometimes they added a third map in the mid-season update, and they did telegraph this in, like, the, the roadmap kind of thing. And sometimes they just did it randomly. They were just like, oh, yeah, here's a new map that we didn't talk about previously. A little bit of extra excitement when you do see that that's available. At the moment, in Vanguard, we are getting two maps a season. So for two months, we're supposed to be vibing and be excited about the same two maps. Right, that's not ideal. And what if one of the two maps is bad? Obviously, they don't intend to add bad maps and bad content into the game. But when one of the maps in an update is a bit rough, like Casablanca in Season 2, Gondola is okay and definitely playable, but it's not the best. But it is definitely the better of the two maps. There were multiple updates in Modern Warfare and Cold War where they just added a new map in the mid-season update. They didn't say anything about it beforehand. It's just like, oh, here's a new map that you can play while you level up this new SMG in the mid-season update. Basically what I'm saying is I just want more content for my game. It's all well and good to mention and boast about how great the launch content was because 16 multiplayer maps at launch is still quite impressive. That's a lot of map content that we did get. If you think about Cold War, there was not that many. It was like 10 or 8 maps at the start and that was just not a good thing. 16 multiplayer maps at the start, very, very good and that was quite impressive. And was one of those things people were talking about at launch being like Vanguard's really, really good, got all this map content, but that was like four or five months ago now. We definitely need more map content getting added to the game more consistently. Like in your mid-season update, just chuck a map in. Maybe add three maps at the start of the season and then another map. It's like We just want more map content just to be able to play good maps more consistently. The next one that we've got here is a little bit shorter as I'm not super interested in this personally, but ranked play definitely should have been added in the 
start of Vanguard. It's clear that a lot of people look at ranked play and they go, yep, this is a place where we can test ourselves against the best. We can actually go sweaty. We can actually do all these things that we can't do really technically in multiplayer normally with like the skill-based matchmaking and stuff like that. Cold War, of course, didn't add this at the start either, but people want a place where they can sweat and they can try as hard as they can, test themselves against the best players in their skill bracket. And this definitely should have been available from the start. And what sort of is the kicker here, Treyarch was actually the one who designed these sort of ranked play for Vanguard, which means like they knew they should have added it into Vanguard from the start. I mean, of course, with time constraints and stuff like that, COVID, people working from home and stuff like that, of course, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to add this stuff. But like they added it in Cold Run. They would have seen that there is a desire for it. They would have seen that people jumped into it pretty much straight away and were super excited about it. And if they were the ones that were designing this sort of rank play system for Vanguard, they probably should have been like, yeah, we should get this in as soon as possible rather than just waiting a little bit of extra time to get that added to the game. The next one that I do have here is a little bit personal, but it's still very, very annoying at the same time. Inspecting weapons in Cold War, super easy. You just push the thing and you look at the gun and it looks really cool. You technically can't do this in Vanguard, which is very, very annoying. As I said, this is a very personal one for me, but when I do make my thumbnails, I like to get a decent view of the weapon just so you guys do get a clear picture and a view of what we are looking at in the video. Pretty simple, and I'm sure you've all seen my thumbnails by now. I usually achieve this by reloading the gun, which gives you a nice clear picture of it, since Weapon Inspect is technically available in this game but apparently on only Mastercraft weapons for some reason like they clearly have the ability to change this and we've actually seen them change this already. I was able to actually inspect the KGM-40 when that did get added to the game, but it wouldn't work for the Whitley, and I'm like, that's a bit weird. And then, like, you could see it in the options menu, you could keybind it, you could change the key that it actually worked with, and then they changed it to only be allowed on Mastercraft weapon. They even changed the little tooltip keybind description to only be allowed on those special Mastercraft weapons, and I'm like, that's really weird. And I get it, but, like, you want people to be able to see the pretty bundled up weapons that they do pay for and spend money on, but, like... I just want to be able to put together YouTube thumbnails really easily and it really shouldn't be that hard for me to just like inspect my weapon and be like, yep, that's what it looks like. It's it's a simple feature, but they definitely should add that in back into the game and just being able to inspect pretty much any gun in the game. Next, we do have more consistent weapon balancing updates. Now, I'm basically looking for more weapon balancing updates. Obviously, this does fall under the scope of wanting more content to mess around with and make videos on and maybe I'm being a little bit greedy here. Maybe this is a little bit specific as well, but when they do adjust and change weapon stats, I get to look at what they changed and make a new video on it's very simple gun gets updated hmm, that probably needs some different attachments now i make a video talking about it and i get more consistent updates more consistent uploads for you guys which is always beneficial for everyone more consistent weapon adjustments are pretty much always a positive in my opinion i understand it could be a little frustrating having your particular favorite gun get changed without much warning like one day you're able to drop easy nukes and v2s with this specific weapon that is your favorite gun in the game and then they change it and now it doesn't kill people that can be very frustrating and i do appreciate that but look at it like this when they do change these weapon stats, it gives everybody the opportunity to play with something new, to try something different, and I'm not even going to lie, I've not even maxed out all the weapons in this game yet, and I'm playing Call of Duty is basically one of my jobs. I want to see massive buffs to the AS44, so I'm incentivized to go level it and try out something different in this game. Like a nerf to the bar would mean I'd have to adjust my class setup to achieve similar results to how I do now. More consistent weapon balancing, in my opinion, is a net positive for the game because it just allows everybody to go out and try something new, and if they did that more consistently like they did in Modern Warfare, especially especially, but also Cold War as well. There'd be more content for people to look at and be like, hey, they changed that gun. Maybe it's good now. Let's test it out. They get people in the game and more people talking about Call of Duty again. So that was technically my five things that I did want to mention that I do have problems with about Vanguard that they probably should have learned from Cold War. But I do have another little gripe here that I could say could be six things, but I mean, six things is definitely a worse title than five things. So this little gripe that I've got that would just make my life easier, I'm not going to count this as a six lesson or anything like that, but I just want better patch notes. Like Modern Warfare had it pretty much perfect. They did reduce damage range with X barrel on Y weapon by 17%. You look at that and you go, I've got all the details I need. I know the exact number that I'm looking at now. I can just go out and change my weapon attachments very easily because I know the exact stats and the exact details of what has changed in this gun. Sometimes they weren't accurate and you did have to do a little bit of testing for yourself instead of being like 17%, it was like 14%, but that's not really the point. Cold War also did this to a certain extent and you're a little less precise with those patch notes, but they were definitely still understandable. But Vanguard's patch notes usually read like we reduce the damage range on assault rifle alpha and that's it and you're like is that that can't um <laughs> 
can I have a little more detail here? Like, what percentage did you change it by? Like, how much did you reduce it by? Did you actually change anything else? Like, is that it? And then you have to spreadsheet it out and the numbers and it's just massively painful. I just want to be able to decipher the patch notes very, very easily. I don't want to have to make screenshots of before and after on each single gun and have a big spreadsheet of all the stats. I just want to be able to look at the thing and go, you reduce that by 17% on this day and that makes it easy to look at and go, yep, that number is that now. I just want more details with my patch notes. So that is five or six different things that Vanguard probably should have learned when they were making the game, putting the game together from Cold War and of course previous games. We did talk a little bit about Modern Warfare as well. If there is a particular lesson that you think they should have learned from the game, of course, you get people going to say like, oh, the skill-based matchmaking and stuff like that that's not going anywhere like it's, it is what it is at this point but if you do have an idea that you think they definitely should have learned from previous games make sure you do let me know of course thank you very much for watching this one if you haven't already done so make sure you do hit that subscribe button with those notifications turned on i do very much appreciate it, and it really does help me out and of course hopefully i will see you in the next video bye